Hey, welcome. Uh, Robert Tonner here. Uh, I'm coming to you today from inside my studio. As you can probably tell by all the Betsy McCall uh, artwork on the wall back here. Um, I want to welcome you to the virtual doll convention. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an incredible time. Uh, as always, Rachel Hoffman really knows how to throw a party. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited to be here uh, to share with you some insights on, on Elowen. As you can tell from the, from the intro to this video, it's all about Elowen. Um, when, when Rachel and I discussed what, what my program would be um, for the convention, uh, we threw around some ideas and one of the ones that really intrigued me was when she said, why don't you do a video of some of your favorite elements? That was a great idea and it sounded great, but you know what? It's not so easy. There, there were, there were a lot of elements for you, you diehard collectors out there who, who have been with me since the beginning. There were a lot of elements anyway. So I, 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 uh, went to my cabinets, uh, the ones that I keep at home. So I, you know, so I figured they must be some of them, my favorites. So anyway, I went through some of those and I picked out a, a, a dozen or so that I thought were, you know, for me, they, they meant something to me design wise or fabric wise or character wise, uh, you know, as, I, as I've been designing. So I'm going to take you through those. Um, first of all, for, for the newbies out there who don't know Ellen that well, let me tell you a little bit about her and how I started with her. Uh, way back in the day when I had Tonner Doll Company, I did this doll called Tyler Wentworth. And Tyler Wentworth was a fashion doll who had tons of outfits, tons of friends, uh, boyfriend. Uh, you know, she was a, a, an acclaimed fashion designer. Blah, blah, blah. Her backstory was uh, all about everything good that could happen to a person happened to Tyler. Uh, very, she did break her leg once, if I remember. But, uh, you know, every, her life was pretty, pretty cushy. Um, so when I was thinking about developing a new doll, a uh, new fashion doll, I, I didn't want her to have that same sort of uh, fashion, deal, fashion doll idealized life. I wanted her to have something a little bit darker. Um, so uh, I started coming up with ideas about her look and her backstory and all this. Well, um, as you know, I came up with uh, Elwyn Wild. Uh, it took a long time to get the, get the name. Her name was originally Gwendolyn Wild, but uh, we settled on Elwyn. And you know, her look and, the, and the, way she, the way she was dressed, I was inspired by a lot of stuff. There was a woman who uh, worked with me, Michelle Hodge, uh, who was an incredibly creative dresser. And uh, I love the way she put herself together. So that was, that was one, definitely one inspiration, plus her constant pushing me to go further with design. Um, also, at the same time, about that time, uh, Ruben Toledo, the husband of fashion designer uh, Isabel Toledo, uh, is an incredible fashion illustrator. And he, he was doing uh, ad work for Bergdorf Goodmans. I loved his work. Absolutely loved it, as you can see uh, with these pictures. Um, he did beautifully dressed, highly stylized women uh, who didn't always look so happy, as you can tell by the pictures. Uh, so I kept his the look of his characters, his illustrations in mind as I went to sculpt Ella. So that's that's what you get. I, I you know I hope she was pretty and fashion doll like, but uh, you know also you know I wanted that underlying sort of ennui, and that's what Elwin, you know her Elwin's tagline. Uh, uh, she was diagnosed at an early age with a chronic ennui. How sad. Anyway, so fast forward many years and uh, many Elowins later and a huge storyline later, uh, we have Elowin Wild. So I'm going to take you few, through, through a few dolls now. And uh, if you have any questions about the dolls or the names of the dolls, forgive me because I don't remember any of the names. But uh, if you have any questions like that, don't ask me. Ask Rachel. You'll get an answer faster from her or somebody online. They'll know better than I will. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this and uh, uh, that's it. Enjoy the convention and enjoy this video. Thanks. This was a fun one. This was a very early yellow one. I think one of the first few collections, I think like the second collection. But anyway, it's Elowen 
kind of wearing a, a Scottish sort of look. Uh, what was kind of interesting about this is I wanted to, I want, I love my pleated skirts. Anybody who knows my Betsy McCall doll and, you know, it, going back even when I was in the, I love a, a plaid tartan pleated skirt. I always loved that. But I wanted to do something on this that was really different for Elowen and, and take that, you know, that theme and kind of do it in a different sort of way. So this, this Elowen has, um, she's, she's wearing bloomers. They're, they're silk tartan. It's a real tartan and it's silk. Uh, but she's wearing bloomers. Um, she has silk tartan leggings and little um, crop boots. She has a silk ruched front jacket uh, with a ruffle sleeve and then a white ruffle blouse underneath. Um, she has a tartan bow tie, as you can see, and then her velvet cape, her navy blue velvet cape is lined in the tartan. Now, this, this would be almost impossible, unfortunately, to do now. It's uh, uh, using all the silk, and I believe we shipped the silk from over here uh, to our factory in China. Uh, which I would never be able to do now just too expensive. But uh, gotta say, uh, this, is, this is one of my favorites, still one of my favorites. I liked it then and I still love it now. This is an early Elowen that I had a lot of fun with. Um, she's, as you can see, she's Asian inspired, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to take pattern and texture and kind of like mix it up a little bit and throw things in there that aren't typically uh, this geisha outfit sort of look. Um, and I, I really had fun with her. Color coordinated her makeup with the outfit, used a lot of velvets and textures and patterns. You can see the, uh, the uh, pink background, uh, leopard print, sort of off sort of things. And then the ties with the medallions hanging from them and all this. Uh, this, was, this was fun. It's like throwing together pattern and uh, fabric. I have to say I was proud of this girl. This was um, fun to kind of come up with. Um, you know, I found fabrics. The way the way I worked with Elowen is I, I, I used to, um, on my work table, I would pull out like a hundred different fabrics and just see what sort of worked or what was interesting or what, you know. Um, and this was one of those. I just started throwing things on to just see what could happen. And I love this coat. I mean, um, it's kind of silly, but I just love it. All the, the lace trim. It's a linen coat. Um, I had light green lace, cotton lace dyed, and uh, then the appliques, the uh, lace appliques all over it. Um, this, it was so much fun. This to me says Elowen because it's, it's, it's youngish and it's, it's kind of quirky and it's hopefully unusual. I get asked a lot about where I come up with ideas for the outfits and, you know, how you, you know, I mean, it's, it's a normal thing that designers get asked and, and you kind of train yourself as a designer. You train yourself to see and look for differences and look for things, that, you know, twists on classics and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's years and years and years of, of uh, you know, looking at clothes and stuff like this. But this one, I can tell you specifically where this came from. If you remember the movie Gone with the Wind. Um, Scarlet wore a blouse very much like this in, in one of the scenes. I don't even remember which one. I don't remember the scene, but I remember the blouse. And uh, uh, I always thought that it would make a wonderful dress. So uh, I thought, and Ellen is the perfect model. So I, I took the blouse, made it all in red. I think uh, Scarlet's was white and burgundy or something like that. I made this all in, in reds and then uh, put a ruffled skirt on it. and. You know, accessorized her and you have you have an Elowen dress. Um, yeah, this one this one was a, a lot of fun to do. I was glad I finally got to turn that blouse into a dress.
I love doing this one. Um, Elowen is kind of a Lucy's 50s housewife sort of look. Um, I know I did this for a convention, I kind of thought, but there, there were um, a couple other dolls that kind of went with this group. But it's Elowen wearing this sort of 50s look with the apron and the whole thing. I think she had baking accessories that came with her, if I remember right. Um, but anyway, this was fun and, and a very, very different look for Elowen. But where it remains Elowen is that, you know, in the 50s, they wouldn't have mixed all these prints. Um, but to me, it works because it's Elowen. Okay, here's one of my all-time favorite Ella ones, and uh, I'm going to tell you why. It's also, I just want to mention this, it's also one of my favorite Ella one hair colors, this um, dark auburn. Anyway, the outfit was uh, very interesting for me. It was a design challenge to myself. Take all the knowledge that you know, all those rules that I grew up with growing up and learning design where I did and when I did and the time period that I did, and throwing them out the window and still making her look good in something that doesn't follow any of the rules. Um, and I, I, it's hard for me to let go of those rules. I'm going to stick my hand in here and uh, give you another view of her. Um, she's, she's wearing all kinds of things that, that, you know, design school and, you know, growing up in the Midwest, you don't do, you just don't do. You know, I'm mixing, I'm mixing proportion. I'm, throwing off colors together, a brown purple for the chiffon tank top over a more purple um, uh, brocade skirt, and then a different shade, a totally different shade that kind of clashes um, on the velvet jacket. All these things, you know, I, I never would have allowed myself to do it if it wasn't for Ellen. And that, that's one of the reasons I love Ellen so much is that she, you know, she allowed me to become more creative. And it's interesting when, you know, a, a, a doll can do that for you. It's great when a doll can do that for you. I was asked to show my favorite Elowens, and this is definitely one of them. Um, Elowens had a million coats over her lifespan, but uh, this is my absolute favorite. Um, get up here and see if you can take a look at that fabric. It's a great fabric, this weave, and you know, it's re-embroidered with uh, kind of a mohair-like yarn, which gives it a lot of texture. And I turned it into this kind of fit and flare silhouette, which is yeah, was very unusual for Elowen. I hadn't done much for her like that. So uh, here we go. It's, it's like a little bit 60s, a little bit 70s, a little bit 50s, and then very much today, I think. I can't really talk about my Elowen favorites without at least mentioning a couple of her friends. Uh, this is Prue, and Prue is wearing a uh, definitely a party dress. Um, and this really says Prue to me. Um, the the two-tone hair, if you see, that uh, we have that uh, mauvey pink that matches her dress. Um, and she's wearing a dress. Um, this is interesting design-wise because the fabric she's wearing, let me get up close, the fabric she's wearing Ordinarily, I never would have picked it for a doll because the scale was huge, but I was able to cut the pattern apart and place it in different ways on the dress so that uh, it looks like it's in scale. And then, uh, you know, it's a fitted bodice with a full skirt, and then we just threw it over a uh, tulle petticoat, threw some boots on her, and you've got a very prue-looking dress. Now, the jewelry was interesting, too. Uh, what I do with clothes is the same thing I did with jewelry with Elowen. Uh, we had we had a box of of leftover parts, and uh, I thought, oh, you know what? Just that would make a great necklace, and you know what? It did. It made a very interesting, unique necklace. I feel sorry for the people who had to produce it, but uh, they did a great job. Anyway, this is uh, this is Prue.
One of the things I love doing for Elowen are the gowns. Um, she usually has one or two a year and uh, they're fun because I, I don't try to make them like um, uh, movie star sexy. I want to make them glamorous, but something, but covered. For the most part, they're usually covered up. Um, and they've got to have fabric in interest and they've got to have um, details. And I think that this dress covers it all. I mean, she's basically covered from head, head to toe, but still looks very glamorous and still looks, she doesn't look dowdy at all. Um, this is Lisette, as many of you know. Uh, I think uh, one of uh, Elowen's more gorgeous and glamorous friends. And you see that fabric, the fabric's very interesting. And then I put um, uh, embroidered sequin patches all over the dress. Now this is an interesting one for the Elowen family. Uh, this doll I did for the Paris Fashion Doll Festival a few years ago. Um, I was asked to do um, Elowen dressed in what could be interpreted as vintage Dior. So I had a, I had a lot of fun with this. Um, the big flowers, the re-embroidered lace, all the tulle, the lace hat, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it was kind of fun. Um, uh, they liked her. She was a big hit. Um, she's got fun little strappy shoes. And I, I really love the face paint. It was um, classic 1950s sort of glamour girl makeup. So Elowen for the Paris Fashion Doll Festival wearing pseudo Dior. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And but uh, before before I end, um, I want to show you what I consider the pride and joy of my collection. And here it is. All right, I I, I couldn't leave you without a, a granddad joke. So there you there you go. Have have a great convention. Enjoy yourself. Take care. Bye.